Hey guys, welcome back to another video on Lousy Gamer and today is uh, an interview with an Empire Z player. I am really happy to introduce you to Jay Rock from Region 30 and he is the general of uh, Road Warriors LOD and um, he is here to answer a lot of questions you might have in your mind and uh, for me it was a uh, really uh, time well spent uh, because I learned uh, a lot from all these uh, players and uh, today, this is the first time I spoke to him and uh, I could see how visionary he is from the time he uh, started this game, which was really, really early. During those days, he was actually thinking about the dynamics of alliances and forming super alliances with multiple alliances and so on. So that was amazing for me how he could think uh, really quick uh, at the early stages of the game. So. Uh, I think you will also enjoy this interview. Please uh, leave your comments and if you have any questions, please uh, do leave them as well. And if you uh, like this video, please hit that like button as hard as you can. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And without any further delay, here you go. Jay Rock from Region 30. Thanks. Hi, Jay Rock. Thanks for joining us uh, for this interview uh, on Empire Z. And I really thank you for, uh, for your time uh, so that you know, all my viewers would, would uh, learn a lot from, from your interview. So again, thanks a lot for joining. Uh, no problem. Uh, you know, I, I like what you're doing. It gives all of us a different uh, look into each generals and different players from different areas. It gives us a look into their world, you know. So it's, it's a little exciting to see what other people think and how they play. Thank you. And uh, usually I start with a uh, very standard question. So I think by now everybody knows my uh, set of questions. The first question is, uh, how long have you been playing Empire Z for? Oh, man. Uh, since about a week and a half since it came out. So about June 10th, I believe. I think it came out like towards the end of May. I couldn't even tell you the year no more because it seems like it's been forever. <laughs> no, I'm surprised you can still remember the date. Uh, um, a lot of people I speak to, they say probably three years, two and a half, and then I'm really surprised you remember the date. That's that's pretty awesome. <clears throat> it makes it, well, it makes it easy for me to remember the day because it's like three days after my birthday. So. <laughs> And uh, that's pretty long time when you say they just started and then uh, you started a week after uh, Ember launched this game. Uh, would you be able to walk us through on various phases of your journey and then and also at the end of uh, when you complete your journey, I want to hear about uh, your alliance RW and LOD. Oh, it's, it's definitely been a long journey. Um, I actually started... Uh, with an alliance back in R5 called Warzone. Mm -hmm. um, I was there maybe two weeks. Uh, the general of that alliance, he got into some real life situation and uh, disappeared. And so um, from there, I actually joined an alliance called Wolfpack back then. I was then every alliance seemed to have like minimums to join i was way below the minimum <laughs> but uh somebody got somebody i knew you know they kind of got me in there early I, I was there for a little bit from there and i became i became a general by the time i was maybe a million power which that seems wow. real low it, yeah it, it seems real low but um Back then, I was able to to protect people at two two million power to allow them to grow in my life. I became a general. Well, my general at the time was a guy named Johnny Utah. He doesn't play anymore, but um, I became a general of another branch they created in Wolfpack. They eventually disbanded from you know some disagreements, and from there, I came up with a name. Uh, they had a new leader, a leader that came out, uh, Lord of Decay, back then. Mm -hmm. And I came up with the name um, Wolves of Decay. And me and a guy named I Kill You, which a lot of people know, yep. uh, we, we, started, we started WAD. You know, we kind of went our separate ways from there. Um, and I started my own branches called Infinite Warriors. I had six branches back then. I had a I had a French alliance. I was all over the spectrum. The way I started my branches 
was I recruited generals. I didn't recruit players. So with the generals came the players. And so it kind of it kind of started a strong nucleus for me anyways. From there, it's just a long road. We didn't finally did a merge into 18. From there, I was on my own. A, a guy you've heard of, Dr. Austin, he was a player of mine. Um, <laughs> funny story about him is I actually found him when he was 500,000 in power. <laughs> and my alliance, my alliance wanted me to boot him. Like we didn't, they didn't even want him. Wow. And uh, yeah, yeah. And he actually ended up becoming a huge force <laughs> in the game. Like, and he, he's actually part of the reason how uh, I ended up coming to RW. We had a common enemy at the time, uh, EZ at the time. So. Mm -hmm. They decided they needed a farm, so they started hitting my land. So, you know. <laughs> yep. Uh, you know, Looney, Looney took us in, and, you know, we've been RW ever since. Uh, biggest question most people have is what does the LOD stand for? Yep. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what road warriors, I took it back to. Uh, WWF times, so you know they, they road warriors were the Legion of Doom back then. So, so that's where that came from. You talked a little bit about finding the the right player, right? So you saw something in a player who is just uh, half a million in power, but you kind of know how much you, he can be as a big power. So what what do you what do you think uh, the qualities that you look for a player or when you are recruiting generals for your expansion. So, what do you, what are the qualities that you look for in a player? First, the first is always activity. You know, because you can you can easily take a player. Um, I, I have a guy now that's been with me for a while called uh, the Beast, and always on, always active, but for a long time it just seemed like never grew. Mm -hmm. You know, but. When they're active like that, you can't necessarily just give up on them, you know. And now, um, I believe he's almost a billion in power, which, you know, for him, that's a huge step, you know. So, um, like Dr. Awesome, for example, he never talked. He never talked. He only would PM. And then one day, all of a sudden, I think uh, somebody hit his city and... He got mad, and he just never stopped growing after that. Good. And uh, but, talking about the uh, qualities again uh, for a general, and I, uh, I'm repeating this third time, so all the interviews that you would have heard about is I suck as a general, but I always admire people who endure this long being a general and also building other alliances and helping them. So. What are the key qualities that you think a good general will have that would make him the best for like three years to sustain in, in an alliance? You have to know when to pick your battles outside of the alliance. Um, you know, people will tell you, uh, you know, I'm not always the most pleasant person, <laughs> but I also have my go-to people, you know what I mean? So, so your friends, if you will. You know, so you you have to be likable at the same time, but you still you have to demand respect. You know, you can't be a general and just be a pushover either. Like I've seen so many people try to start alliances and they just roll over. You know, the first sign of trouble, they run. Mm -hmm. Or you know, I, it took me it took me forever to sustain 100 million power because I would make my guys stay out of stuff for so long just so they could keep growing and the first one there boom 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 you know it, it really wasn't until I hit <laughs> a major war yeah and actually when I first got to uh, 18 I actually fought ended up having to fight RW which wow. Looney wasn't the general of that then. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, it, 
it, it's just been crazy, you know, like, I actually, strategy is a big thing, strategy is a big thing, I actually, um, it was a risky move, but it ended up being a great move, um, I actually disbanded my entire alliance for a period of time, and it was by design, my guys knew, when I give you the word, we're coming back, and, you know, of course some didn't, but, you know, I have guys like, um, my, uh, Winter Soldier, he's actually posted his general right now because of my real life. He's been with me since almost day one, basically. Um, Prime, uh, my French guy, Sipian, he was one of the first generals I brought into my very first alliance. I think he came in with like seven or eight other French guys at the time, and he, he's still around. You have to create loyalty within your alliance. That makes sense. And talking about people, and uh, as a general, what do you think is the the worst conflict that you always have in a team? For the last three years, you would say that, okay, this is the problem happens every single month or every single week, and how do you tackle that problem? It's different for me now. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't have as big issues. Um, recently, we had a little conflict between two players. Um, things tend to iron themselves out in my lands now. Yep. But, you know, back in the day, um, man, I had some kids in my lands. Um, I don't even remember Bilza and was the other guy. But they were hellions. They were young. Mm -hmm. They they were trash talking to everybody at any moment in the game, and you know, there, it, back then sometimes I zero I zero players just to teach them, but they stayed. Thing, things are honestly things are smoother for me now. My that, alliance can run itself. That and, sounds good. That's the dream uh, of every general. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, about we talked about the journey and. Um, character building for a for a general so i'm pretty sure you would have a fair share of the best and worst moment during your time in empire z uh would you want to kind of pick one worst moment that you still remember and one best moment as well oh, man, there's so many there's so many good and bad moments but i'm my for me personally my best moment is i used to create a list so I might not get you today, but I'm going to get you, you yeah. know, and um, I remember the day uh, me and uh, Dr. Awesome, we caught a guy named Axel Foley shield down, mm -hmm. and this guy is just that guy that everybody wants to zero, you know, he, he just had one of those mouths, and I, I took one of my billion one of my billion power accounts and literally sent every troop I had at him. And Dr. Awesome was pounding away at him and then I think some others joined in too, but seeing him finally zeroed and then <laughs> never hearing his name again, that was amazing for me. Yeah, that, that, that's a highlight. I, I was ready to retire after that. Like, that, was, <laughs> that was my final bucket list. Uh, worst moment, honestly, was probably the disbanding of the alliance. That was the riskiest and hardest thing I had to do because there were no, there was nothing to assure that, you know, I would go from nothing back to where we are today, mm -hmm. you know. And even, even after I disbanded the alliance, I still stuck with my original plan. I brought in um, generals from other alliances. They brought their players. Uh, I stuck with mostly my R5 players first mm -hmm. and built it with that nucleus. Um, one big merge for me was DMZ. Uh, I have a guy named Big Rob. Massive, massive troop numbers. Um, I probably fought for two years to finally try to get them to join me, and that finally happened. So that was a great moment for me, too. But disbanding my last, that was that was pretty scary. Yeah, 
And uh, you talked about uh, the people that you stuck to during the hard times. And uh, do you want to kind of shout, give a shout out or name a few people that you really respect in the game? All my majors. My, I have literally some of the best majors. My, my right hand man is Winter Soldier. He's, he's there anytime I need him. He's been with me through the dirt. Um, he's, you know, he's watching the Alliance now for me. You know, taking care of things. Um, Looney and Spoil, like, the way that I've seen relationships after relationships after relationships on this game. Mm -hmm. well, I think we all have. And, but the way that they play together, like, and the way they work together, it, that, it's kind of amazing to me, being that they're in the same household together. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Recently, uh, recently, a name that stepped up to me, though, is uh, Tommy. Tommy Guns, it seems like every other day is a, a new uh, huge attack report from him. Um, his, his numbers have gotten pretty crazy recently. Yep. So. But I, I could go on and on. I mean, I got guys <laughs> that, you know, a guy named D-Flight, I talk trash to him constantly. He's from Canada. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm in the state, so you know, his, I, I bash him all the time. But you know, he he's undoubtedly been there. You know, even back in during my FC time, FC war time. And yeah. uh, we talked about the alliance, uh, about how a general should be, and also about people. So now, about you and your thoughts. Uh, so coming to your favorite things, what, what's your favorite troop type and, and why? I mean, hands, it's, it's hands down today, I mean, it's the pants, you know. Anybody says anything different, you know, they're, they're pretty much just defensive guys anyways. But honestly, I miss the regular T4 troops, you know, when you fought with strategy so you had to check somebody's city out and you might send this troop mm -hmm. you know or that troop you know now it's pretty much one attacks one defends one hits ICs you know so I think that's something that I kind of miss from back in the day I wish they would kind of find a little bit of a balance there yep agreed and the infected leader so do you have one infected leader that you would say the best or you like it or you know close to your heart uh, a few. It's, it's, the same thing with the, it's the same thing with the leaders you know i was sad to see that they put the rudolph and the blitz in, in the uh, uh on that event the other day mm -hmm. you know and then and in the store too you know so now you know if anybody didn't get that sorry for them that was your, probably your last chance um, so at this point for me, I'm going to say probably maybe the, the file banker just because it lets me build more troops at a time, you know, and the slow off because it builds them faster, you know. So. <laughs> totally agree. Yeah, everybody, everybody loves these two. Uh, and uh, let's talk about uh, Ember. Uh, so after all these changes that Ember has done, do you think still this game has any life left? And what are the changes that you would propose uh, to Ember to change that would keep the, the, the game going? Right now, the, the game is back to, and it's been at this stage before. It always goes to different stages. You know, just like one time, coin was hard. You could never find coin. Yep. Now everybody and their mother has billions and billions of coins. You know, and it's the same thing. Like right now, it's Farmville. Everybody wants to hit everybody's farms. Everybody's watching everybody's bank bubble. You know, nobody's really attacking cities anymore because it's, it's almost suicide for a lot of cities, especially when you get to the big guys. Yep. Um, honestly, I think the only move left for Ember is to merge all realms into one. Wow, that's right. that's uh, that's really a good advice. I had never thought about this, but it's it's going to be crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that will be that. That's what it's going to take to uh, really wake this game back up. 
to where, you know, where where we came from, even R5 to, you know, to 18, it was constant. Well, R5, I was constantly at war with SC. You know, 18, uh, I mean, you know, then it was easy, you know, so this, this is it's kind of good, you know, it gives us some time to build a little bit, but, you know, War, war, war is fun sometimes, you know. Yep, definitely. I think this is what I kind of like from other players as well and uh, what you have shared. Uh, the troops are built to, to be used and uh, if we build the troops and keep it, it's no point. So uh, war sometimes definitely helps to get rid of that and then start again. It's, that's, that's the fun there, uh, though it gets expensive at times. <laughs> yeah. I never really was a big spender, and when I first started, gee, it, it, the packs were expensive, and you didn't get you didn't get nothing like you get today. Yeah. Like packs were they were ugly back in the beginning, um, but now you can get, with with IC hitting. You honestly, if if you're not in an alliance that doesn't hit that doesn't hit IC, you're in the wrong place because. You don't even need to buy packs anymore. Agreed. Agreed. And uh, about the DNA power, uh, so I got some mixed feeling about that, but majority of them are uh, against the DNA power because they they think it's uh, it's just bullshit from from Ember because you you give a player a fake power and then it's kind of hard to it's not tangible at the end of the day though you put a number to it. So what's your take on it? Do we uh, does Ember do Ember need to keep it, or they have to get rid of it? I'm kind of. I don't think there's really much of a purpose for it now. It doesn't mean there won't be later, because I mean, obviously, we all already have enough DNA to have our leaders built. Everybody pretty much probably has all their leaders done. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean Ember. You know how Ember is. Though. That doesn't mean tomorrow they're not going to come up with some new thing for use of DNA, you know, so, you know, Agreed. one of those things, if you have it, it means one of two things, you either, you either attack for DNA, or you just fight a lot, you know, and then, it surprisingly, it, it amazes me how many guys are out here, and literally attacking only second cities in search of <laughs> DNA, just so they can look like they're big Exactly. Dogs. That's, that's the sucky part and people don't like it because you put up the fake power. You, the thing is that what people are asking Ember is you can keep the DNA for all the purposes you want, but just remove the component of power. But I think that's also kind of triggering the wars and stuff. In a way, in a way it's a trigger. <laughs> it, it, definitely, definitely. Because it seems like you know, um, most, most from the realm we're from, they... They always try to get rid of their DNA, but now it's just a thing that people are just protecting it and piling on and on. I guarantee a lot of these guys that are, you know, 20 and 30 billion in power that are shielded, it's DNA, you know, because <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, if I'm, if I'm even 10 billion in power, I'm not ever shielding, you know, so... That kind of is a telltale. If they're shielded and they're huge, they're probably stocked with DNA. Exactly. That makes sense. And uh, talking about the new players coming in, uh, it could be uh, players who are playing in the other regions, apart from the three big regions, or people who are migrating into our regions. Uh, what would be uh, a few tips that you would give to the new players who would coming into the game? <laughs> I'm serious. Like there's there's guys out here with hundreds of millions of troops. You know, a new player, you need to stay over in them realms that we're not allowed in. You know, just build, 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 build. You know, and as for like aspiring generals, honestly, I don't even know. I don't even know if that's possible anymore. You know, I don't. I don't know if it's possible to start a brand new alliance and, you know, mm -hmm. for it to sustain itself. I don't know if that's really even a possibility. You know, most people.
people who have been playing the game for years. Most people will know who's general, who have been generals, and I think people are comfortable with that. You know, you have even some of these new generals, you know, it seems like they're guys, it's the same. That's their general, they're never going anywhere else, you know. Yeah, makes sense. And uh, we are kind of close uh, to the end of this conversation, and I would like to check with you if there are any final thoughts that you want to register uh, to the viewers. War is getting ready to start, you know. Yeah, it's coming. So that's, that's you know, get ready. Get ready. You know, sleeping dogs lie low, but, yeah. You know. <laughs> Uh, and I, I really and thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. I learned a lot uh, from this conversation, and I hope uh, all the viewers of Love the Gamer uh, would, would definitely appreciate uh, the time that you have spent, and they, they learned uh, quite a bit from this. And, uh, and I really wish you all the best for your game and also your real life. After six months, we'll do this again if, if needed, so that we know the game changes every now and then, so we'll take a check again to see if what you think and so on so that'll be good